It's good coffee. Hey, fellas. Welcome back. Today, well, I've already started. I've been working on it for about a week and a half, but I've been kind of doing it slowly because I get other stuff I'm doing as well. But I am building the Zuki Mora HO229. Uh, this was the experimental aircraft from the uh, Germans that they uh, started towards the end of the war. And uh, I've always been interested in this. It's the, uh, the first stealth fighter, stealth bomber, fighter, whatever. Um, it's a really interesting plane, and from what I understand, there were only two of them built, or one built and one almost completed. Uh, I think they crashed the first one, and then uh, they didn't get the second one finished by the, uh, by the end of the war, and the Americans found it. Uh, at the end of, after the war ended <clears throat> and brought it back to the US There's a really good documentary that I found on YouTube man. My hair looks good today um, about this <clears throat> And I guess Northrop was it Northrop. Yeah, I think it was Northrop um, Built a one-to-one -one scale model of it and uh, it's a pretty cool video if, if you haven't seen it just search uh, the HO229 on YouTube, and it'll pop up. But anyway, uh, this is a heck of a kit. Uh, and I'm going to do something really special with it. Now, this is my kit. I bought it, and I planned, I planned on building it, but a guy that I build planes for said he'd be interested in it. So uh, I'm kind of building it um, the way he and I both, both want to do it. It's going to be in flight, which is going to be uh, kind of a task because of the way it's it's set up um, But I'm also going to do something different and something that I've been wanting to do for a long time And this happens to be the perfect project uh, Because there are a lot of internal structures in, in this in this plane and I think that's pretty much the way Zuki Mora likes to build their kits, but I think they kind of went all out on this one building all, uh, uh, Making all the internal structures so they can be visible now they do supply uh clear plastic for basically all the uh, the wing panels and the fuselage panels which really stinks uh, if you've worked with well if you've built planes you'll know that the clear plastic's a lot br more brittle than than the other stuff and uh, uh, I don't know that's kind of a downer in my book um, but I guess they do that so you can you can build it with the the clear panels and you can see the inside but I think that kind of looks crappy, and um, the guy that uh, I'm going to sell this to, he kind of thinks it looks tacky, and I agree with him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cutaway. And uh, so basically I'm going to cut um, around one of the engines and the top of the fuselage, and then on the left wing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut away some of the, uh, the exterior panels, <clears throat> and so you can see the inside. So let's take a look at what we got done so far. All right, so first off, the clear plastic. Now, <laughs> when, I, when I opened up the kit and I started looking at it, I was hoping that they supplied both clear and um, the, the regular gray styrene, but they didn't. They just give you the clear plastic, which, oh uh, gosh. Um, so I went ahead and I cleaned up. I cut off all the clear plastic because I knew it was going to be a chore and I was going to dread it. And I cleaned up all the... Uh, the uh, the joints where the the sprues hold up the plastic parts, and it took me a long time just because it's so delicate. I did end up breaking one of these pieces here. Let's see here. This is my only casualty, is this little chip piece, which is going to be fine because it's going to be painted anyway. But uh, so this is the top of the fuselage. But you can see all the panels are. <laughs> or all the outside of the plane is clear plastic, which is, you know, yeah. Wish they'd have done it differently, but oh well. Uh, so anyway, what I plan to do for this cutaway project is this is going to be the top. Uh, I forgot which wing is which, but say this is the left, the uh, left side of the wing. What I plan to do, let's grab a marker. And if you mark up like I do, a lot of times if I cut pieces off the sprue and I don't glue them yet, I'll mark them what, what 
and the letter and number they are with uh, Sharpie. Just keep in mind, uh, before you paint it, you want to take that off with some isopropyl alcohol. Because if you don't, it's, it's going to it's gonna take a long time to, to cover it up. For some reason, at least in my experience, trying to cover that up even with primer, it still shows through a little bit. I don't know what magic stuff this is made out of. But say this is going to be the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm going to cut out the engine area like this something like that it's not gonna be exactly but that's the idea anyway and then for the top top of the left wing I'm gonna come in and do a cutaway like so and again this isn't set in stone right here but kind of like that so what I'm gonna have to do on this bottom piece is this plane was made mostly of plywood and so what I'm gonna do is on the inside of the the bottom wing I'm gonna have to paint this uh, with to make it look like wood because that's gonna show through you've got the internal structures that go in here and I haven't actually got those done yet um, but you got the internal bracing system in here and uh, some fuel tanks <clears throat> so I'm gonna get all that painted up and then uh, paint this with the the wood wood texture and then uh, put this over top and I think that'll be pretty cool and then paint the the outside none of this will be clear I'll paint it all so that's what I plan to do I've never done it I've always wanted to do it and um, so this is my opportunity to try it now it is going to be a little bit more difficult with these plastic with this uh, clear plastic because it is more brittle so I'm going to have to be a lot more careful basically I'll just come in here with a dremel and do the inside and then sand the sand uh, a nice smooth edge around around my hole all right now let's take a look at the instructions <clears throat> this is only the second Zukimura kit that I've built but I do love their instructions they're very detailed um, you know they got a lot of information about the plane um, but the thing that I like and for some reason, a lot of these kits don't give you Tamiya colors. They give you Vallejo. So um, I'll either have to mix my own Tamiya color or find my Vallejo paints that match it. Uh, and again, color is one of those things that some people gripe and complain about. And um, you know, I'm I'm of the the ilk as long as it's close. But since this is a German German plane and it's going to somebody else then I will do my best to, to use the correct colors. But anyway, they're very detailed in their instructions. And one of the things I like, now I've built up the fuselage frame. And uh, that was really slow going, and I'll show you why. But one of the things that I really like is when they tell you to put a part somewhere, a lot of the instructions, they kind of give you this main blow-up view right here. Um, but what Zuki Mora does is they give you a bunch of different angles. <clears throat> so they show you how it goes on. And in, in a lot of a lot of instructions, you look at it and you're like, well, how does this does it go this way? It has to be very specific. And especially with this frame, because there are all these little bitty pieces that need to be very precise, they do give you different views. So you've got a top view here, and then they show you it's painted, they give you another view. Um, and this really comes in, that really comes in handy when you're building the the, uh, the fuselage frame. And uh, let's see right down here. See up here, they show you exactly where which holes go where. And and I really like that about the instructions. So love the instructions; they're they're uh, they're really good. <clears throat> so let's take a look at what I've got done so far. All right, this is the fuselage frame, and it is really complicated, and I don't have all the pieces in there. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> this is uh, a lot more complicated than anything that I've ever done, and, and fortunately, I didn't break any pieces. 
Um, you do have to be careful cutting this stuff off the sprue because, you know, obviously they're, they're little. But Zucchimor's plastic seems to be a little, little softer than, say, like, um, I think Hasegawa has, has kind of a, a uh, I wouldn't say brittle, but uh, more rigid plastic. Um, this is pretty pliable. And, I mean, it's not, not overly dumb, but uh, I don't want to break anything. Yikes gotta be careful but anyway there's so many little pieces in here that you have to glue up and what happens is is you have to build the bottom portion of this this frame <clears throat> then there's a top portion that goes on but you can't put the top portion in until you put the two jet engine two jet engines in there so that that's going to require that I paint this first paint the top part, get the engines all done, then set them in here. Well, there's a lot of little things that need to fall into place. And when you glue this, you just basically have to have to take your time, go slow, glue a little bit. And what they'll have you do is you cut out this top piece, which is basically all one piece. I'm not sure if I, I haven't glued anything in here. So this is the top. You have to glue on, say, like these little bits here and this here at the same time. And while that's soft, you take out your 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 uh, top piece and you make sure that they're aligned. So then you have to kind of set it in there. So hopefully when you're done, this all lines up because there's like, I don't know, maybe 20 different points where this glues in to this bottom frame. If you look right here. See all these little little holes those all glue in it points on this bottom frame so uh, I hate gluing parts that are already painted but this is just the way it's gonna have to be so instead of using a primer and getting thick coats of paint on there I'm gonna go ahead and just paint it with the straight color and I do have some Vallejo color for this that I'm gonna use but, um, so yeah, I'm going to have to do that. And then, uh, you know, you basically, you just have to go slow and uh, do it a little bit at a time and test fit and let the glue set up. And I'm going to, once I get this painted and get the engines in there, I'm just going to have to do the same thing. I'll just put in, put in like this piece, glue here, here, and here, hold it. Let that set up, then come back and make sure, and, and just glue a little bit at a time. So that's the that's the airframe, and that's why it's taking me so long to do this, because I want to do it correctly, and because that's all going to be showing. Uh, the engines I have ready to go almost. Now, in the instructions, let's see if we can grab the instructions. What they have you do is they set this up where you can just take the engine out or, or not take it out while it's built but you can I, I think they have like a a uh, a part in here where you can put it on a stand or something and display it uh, what I've done is I've built up both engines and their sub assemblies and uh, what they have you do to start off is put all these uh, rotor blades on this little rod here. Now that's not really necessary because you're not going to see this. In fact, they show it all painted up, which I don't know why anybody would do that unless they're going to do a cutaway and uh, show the internal workings of the engine. It is kind of cool, but uh, it's not necessary to do all this work. Um, the, then they have you take these outer covers for these rotor blades and you have to cut out and glue in all these little pieces and they're all different just slightly different sizes yikes and the rotor blades all have a slightly different base and you can kind of see how it curves so they all have to be in enumerated order so what happens is, is you stick this in here and then you come back and you put the top on. Like so, if I can get it. 
And this is why I say you don't need to put all those pieces in there. It will fit. I've tried it. But you do kind of have to work it in there. All right. I'm not doing that. But it does fit. Uh, in fact, I have one glued up. And this is that outer casing that I was just trying to put on. And as you can see, he who can't see anything in there, hardly, um, that's going to be the front of the, the plane. And this is going to be the rear. So what you do is you put this on and then slap these covers on. And this is going to be the rear exhaust. I don't really have this on here correctly. Let's see if we can get it on here right so you can see it. Okay. So it's going to look like that. So obviously you can't see any of that stuff in there. You will be able to see a little bit in there. So um, just just uh, if, if you're going to build it, then uh, just... You know, if, if, uh, just trying to save you some work if you don't need to do it. I just did it just because. And, um, so that's, uh, that's what I've got done so far. Uh, I'm going to get the, uh, the engines all put together and get this frame painted and then, um, get the, the frames on the wings all put together and painted up. And, uh, and that will be the, subject of part two of this build series. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you then.